today's retail sales report is was fairly consistent with what we've been seeing for some time now, which is that consumer spending is growing, but it's not growing at a particularly impressive uh, pace, particularly by the standards of past recoveries. Uh, we're seeing some hints that uh, the, the increase in gasoline prices is eating into family, families' budgets because we're seeing a lot of the growth coming from spending at gas stations and uh, the, the spending on other sorts of items is actually um, growing much more slowly and more slowly than it had been growing. Well, consumer spending is an important part of the economy. Um, solid growth in consumer spending is an essential ingredient of a robust and self-sustaining recovery. This is partly because consumers account for two-thirds, um, you know, historically they've accounted for two-thirds two of of spending. Of course, it's not the only ingredient to a successful recovery. Uh, for example, we need to see um, jobs to continue to grow because uh, we, we need those jobs in order for income to continue to grow um, because people need that income to be able to spend. So commodity prices have been rising um, quite rapidly over the past um, year or so since last summer and um, that is um, that is slowing spending in this country the most prominent example would be the price of oil the price of oil notwithstanding some decline in the last couple of weeks is up 30 percent from it, where it was a year ago and that has translated into um, much higher gasoline prices and that means that, that families need to commit a larger share of their spending to, um, to filling up their tanks, uh, which means they have less money left over to spend on other goods. And that, that which is, is essentially a reduction in their real income, which um, is, is slowing the economy. Well, we're looking at a, at a at a pretty slow recovery. We've seen periods over the last year and a half when the economy looks like has looked like it was picking up and um, people have started talking about um, the economy gaining ahead of steam. We've seen other periods where the economy has slowed down and people have worried about the, it stalling and there being a double dip. I think the fact is that it keeps averaging out to kind of a slow, moderate pace of expansion. And I think that's what we'll continue to see. So um, what can we do about that? Um, well, first of all, we need to be patient. There are still important structural problems in our economy that need to be worked through. Um, we went into the, to the recession with an oversupply of housing, with a fragile financial system, with um, too much debt, and um, things have improved on some of those margins, but we have more to work off. I think uh, the government needs to be focused on creating conditions whereby businesses uh, feel comfortable planning ahead and, and hiring. So, for example, they need to uh, work out a plan for reducing the deficit and the debt over the long run so that businesses have the confidence to uh, move forward with their plans. They need to make sure that uh, we don't have excessive regulations that are holding businesses back from hiring. To the extent that we um, use any fiscal policy to support the recovery, at this point it should probably be fairly narrow, narrowly targeted on creating jobs. So for example, um, the reduction in payroll taxes this year, that is uh, letting businesses hire uh, more cheaply, effectively, because there are a lot, they can put the same amount of money in workers' pockets at a lower rate, uh, a lower wage. So that's encouraging hiring. I think other things they might think about is whether there are cost-effective ways um, to to match some of the workers that have been unemployed uh, with new jobs. We have a very high rate of long-term unemployment uh, in this in this recovery. In fact, it's higher than it's been at any time, even the, the worst episodes we've seen in the post-war period. And uh, I think we should be exploring whether there are um, cost-effective ways to retrain workers or to match them with, with employers. We need to see higher saving, endless borrowing, 
than we saw during the boom. And saving has already come up. The saving rate has been running between 5 and 6 percent. So it's up from a low of 1 percent during the height of the boom. And that's partly because households need to replenish the wealth that they lost when house prices fell and stock prices fell. It's partly because households have come to the realization that they can't count on rapid growth in house prices and stock prices to essentially do the saving for them. So I think um, we do need to see, we, we are seeing higher saving rates and we're going to need to those saving rates to remain higher. That's going to slow the recovery, but in the long run it's going to put households in a more solid and sustainable position, so it's going to be more conducive to long-run growth. I think the, the other issue is, um, is borrowing. We've seen, and deleveraging. So households were, went into the crisis with very large amounts of debt, very high um, commitments to make mo monthly payments on debt, and that left them extremely vulnerable. Uh, we've seen household debt fall a, a lot. Um, part of that has reflected uh, people defaulting on their debt um, in, in shedding their debt that way, but part of that has been a reduced pace of new borrowing, um, which reflects um, to some extent uh, greater prudence on the part of consumers. They're borrowing less because they're less comfortable borrowing. It also reflects uh, financial institutions being less willing to, to, to lend to households. Um, however it's happening, this slower growth in debt is um, is, is again uh, something that's, that's, that's uh, leading to the slow recovery in consumer spending, but it's also something that, that's going to be good for households over the longer run because it puts them in a, a stronger financial position.